What's going on? Welcome to Tech with Sean, and today I'm going to show you how I used the Z390 Aorus Master to overclock the 9900K to 5 GHz. Alright, the first thing we got to do is get into the BIOS, so we're going to restart and furiously mash the delete key. And there we go. Okay, so this is the main screen of the BIOS. Um, actually, it may load up for you the first time in easy mode, which looks like this. Um, and this gives you kind of a general overview of everything, but you want to go down here and hit classic, because this is really where you're going to see everything. So I'm just going to go through this um, item by item and just show you what I'm using. This is for a 9900K at 5 gigahertz. Your system, your chip may require different voltages, etc., but a lot of the settings should probably be similar. So first thing, we have advanced frequency settings. And in here, the base clock is 100 by auto, but I just went ahead and keyed in 100, just so it wouldn't do any wonky stuff. I have disabled the enhanced multi-core performance. I have the CPU clock ratio at 50, and that uh, multiplied by the base clock is going to give you 5 gigahertz. Let's see. I have XMP disabled and I did my memory timings manually uh, because it was giving me some instability. We have DDR4 3200. And there's a hidden menu in here that's the advanced CPU core settings and this has some important stuff. So in here, um, you have various settings. There's a couple important ones down here uh, where it says core current limit. I went ahead and set that to 255. I think that's what it is automatically, but I just went ahead and set that. And this is where um, you can disable your C states, and that can also give you some more stability with your overclock. You may want to choose to leave those on, you know, it's all up, up to you. Down here in advanced memory settings, um, this is where I have the XMP disabled. And the timing mode I have manual. And then there's one called advanced manual where if you have different memory kits, you can set the timings differently. But since my kits are the same, I just have it on manual. And then in here is where you key in your um, timings. Easiest way to do this is probably just to take a picture on your phone of the RAM and then put it back in the computer and then just, you know, look directly at that picture to get the timings as you enter them. Advanced voltage settings. This is pretty important. So in here you have advanced power settings. And uh, in this one, we're going to set the V-Core load line calibration to turbo. And this is going to keep it the most stable when it's idling and at load so that it fluctuates the least. I did the same thing with the CPU V-Core current protection. I went ahead and put that on turbo also. Next is the CPU V-Core. Now this is where the quality of your chip or the binning or the silicon itself is going to come into play. I need mine at 1.345 volts to be stable at 5 GHz. You may need more, you may need less. The less volts you have, the cooler it's going to run. So the quote unquote better chips will run cooler and require less voltage um, to hit whatever clock. Let's see, I really don't have a lot of stuff changed in here. Um, the VCCIO and system agent voltage, those can fluctuate kind of strangely sometimes if you have XMP enabled. So that may be something to look at depending on how you choose to overclock. Chipset voltage control, I have this on auto. DRAM voltage control. So yeah, the stock for this kit is, I believe, 1.35, but with my manual timings and everything, I have it at 1.38, just to give me a little extra leeway and for, you know, to make sure I don't have any stability problems. 
and um, I don't think that I messed with anything in here. Nope. So that's the voltage settings. This is a um, just a PC health report, I guess, and it'll show you what type of stuff you're running at. Miscellaneous settings, I've never messed with these either. So then over here you just have some general system information, um, information about your BIOS. This is where you can change your boot priority if you want to change which disk you boot from. You can change your mouse speed for in the BIOS itself. Peripherals, you can change some of the, how the LEDs behave in different, you know, system configurations. Other various settings. Nothing really to do with the overclocking, I don't think. Yeah, didn't mess with any of these. And so yeah, and then once you get um, you know some settings that you like, you can go ahead and save a profile. So I'll go ahead and I'll just save one as an example, and we'll call this OC 5.0. And down here, this is where you can set it. Um, whether you want it to boot into the easy mode or this classic mode. So then we'll go ahead and press uh, F10. Oh. What is that? I changed it from 3200 to 3200. That seems weird. I'm just going to exit without saving. <laughs> so now we'll boot back into Windows and we'll see what our clock speed is looking like. All right, well, here we are in Windows. You can see we're up and running at 5 gigahertz on all cores. Um, we're idling right around 30C, so that's not too bad. And uh, I will say that with this on a Corsair 240 millimeter AIO cooler, when I run stress tests, it does get pretty toasty. Um, running real bench stress test or something like that, it'll get up to like 98C. But it doesn't get like that during games. Um, most of the time it's in the 50s or 60s during gaming. And that's what I use the machine for, so that's fine with me. Okay, well, I hope this video was helpful. The Gigabyte BIOS is kind of unique compared to some others I've worked with, but with the right settings, you should be able to get it up to 5 GHz as long as you have decent cooling. Make sure to drop all your 9900K overclocking questions and comments down below, and uh, give us a like, subscribe, and we'll see you next time.